<laughs> Welcome to the Freedom Cage Podcast, where we like it's a free state of mind each and every page. We come all these music, of course. To my right, I got my main guy, my ace, my left, my right as we, Sean, but I know the most senior leader for your social. You know. I mean, I'm Kenny, man. I'm a pink cat like on all those socials. But yo, man, like we were saying a little while ago, if, it's, if you're outside tonight, you know what I mean? Hopefully last night was smooth for you, because uh, oh, it could yeah. be rough today, man. But how you been otherwise, brother? <laughs> What's going on with you? Oh, man, listen, you know, it's Black History Month. We talked about it last episode. It's, it's exhausting being black around still this is, time. Still is, still is, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but I'm cool, man. Um, the usual get up and go has it, been really, like, high volume and, mm-hmm. and, and just maintaining and having priorities set up. So I... I no complaints, man. A lot of positivity ahead. How about you? Yo, man, uh, busy week so far. You know, a lot going on as far as Valentine's, you know, uh, more holidays with the birthdays coming up with the missus. Yes. But um, just trying to keep my, my head down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just get everything done real quietly, real efficiently. Just trying to do my job and not do too much if anybody else is up. Facts, facts. <laughs> nah, man, I hear you. I hear you completely. Oh, man, but off the top, man, uh, a, couple, a lot of your new music came out this past weekend, bro. But um, I might be biased. This Kanye album... I don't want to say he's the goat out the gate. That's not my job. <laughs> just came out. I'm not calling it a classic or none of that. But uh-huh. just for perspective for those out there, when Jesus, the album actually came out, like, I, unlike, unlike a lot of people, I actually like that album. So I might have a biased yeah. opinion of the man already. But this Vultures one with Ty Dolla Sign was kind of on point. I ain't going to hold you. I liked it a lot. Right. Did you get a chance to hear it? No, I haven't heard that, man. I, I've been into the boy Usher. We we'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, that boy, that boy, don't know how to get old. But it, nope. I mean, no, I got no complaints with Usher. Uh, but yeah, uh, as far as the like, Vultures album, Ty Dolla Sign's the cheat code. Um, you can put him on anything you want to. Facts. He's really like the dream through a Travis Scott lens to me. Like you know what I'm saying? He's just okay. he just he just maximizes both fields really good. But um, Burn was doing he, he drew his he threw his daughter on one of the joints. You might have heard that one. Uh, she calls herself Miss Westy. Mm. But uh, she's going to have a dope life with Kanye being your dad for a little bit. Yeah. As long as he don't go like full crazy, she's going to have a dope life. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, this Usher album, man. Um, are you surprised you're still doing it after all these years? No, not at all. Um, there's something about his approach to music that has always made you excited to hear his project. Mm. And it's tough to find an Usher project that isn't good, doesn't take you on a journey. He takes you on a journey with his albums. And it's the same thing with this one. I mean, he hits you with coming home out the gate. Mm -hmm. The melody on that one is just super smooth. And then he throws Burner Boy right on the top. Like, it's just, welcome to this project. I'm about to take you on a journey. Just sit back. Either drive your car or take this ride wherever you go, and I got and I got you on the rest. That's just good. Man. He he's really uh, stood the test of time, and it was, I like uh, there was a shaky point for him. Mm-hmm. But I feel like he was trying to be too young, like he kind of left his generation that he grew up. With. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, he, he grew up in Atlanta, so he's a, he might be around the young culture a lot closer than a lot of uh, other R and B artists. But I feel yeah. like he was reaching a little too far back. But then he, he caught back up to his old self. Yeah, and started doing the, you know what I mean the old usher that we know of. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that's yeah. his bag. He, he's He's perfected, man. Hell of a weekend he's having. No, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so of course, you know, I, I actually been through the album at least three times. Um, because yesterday, well, not yesterday, the week before when it actually dropped, I um, I was on a ride to a, a practice we have out in Long Island, and then I had to go to Jersey after. So I had plenty of time Sweet. to just listen to the album three listens through. And I got a couple favorite tracks, man. Um, I think the very first one, of course, is Coming Home. I love mm-hmm. the intro. You know, I like the melody to that one. Kissing Strangers was interesting. I should go and give, give you them <laughs> joints for you. I mean, the titles always kind of throw you for a loop. But once you hear this one, you go, oh, I see what you did here. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's he's dope. He's actually man. And my bad. Did you listen to it yet? I mean, it's just I running I heard the first half. Okay. Hey, hey listen. Get, so, so, it's Usher, man. Bro, bro. I, this music's timeless. Like a, I'm slow burning. Yeah, hey, hey, yeah, no, no, no problem. Um, so yeah, Kiss the Strangers is really cool. I like the the um I want to say the the way he's saying that literally we do go from strangers who start kissing, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. depending on your preference. And then literally it can go from that to you know, I mean, we could be strangers again because something didn't work out, and you know, now it's like Full kissing other people. And how do how do we get there? Like, what what happens that breaks down? It's it's incredible. It's usually cheating. 
But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, full circle, man. When shit don't, when shit don't work out, mm-hmm. exchanges again, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, man. Um, and then, of course, after that, uh, Ruin. I mean, Ruin out the gate before the album even dropped. Yeah, it was wonderful, man. It takes you, you know, it, it literally takes most people back to how they're probably in a current mind state of not wanting to be in a relationship. Mm. You know, they've been through either some previous trauma, or some sort of hurt, and now they're literally like not good for anybody who encounters them. And it almost you almost feel bad because they're like this train that's just running <laughs> <laughs> and just like damn, just leaving this this these bodies behind of broken hearts. Oh man, being an R&B guy, man, it's rough, man. You're gonna, you're gonna get, <laughs> be a lot of dead bodies on this road, like you know. Uh-huh. So you gotta, you gotta, if you could get through there and come to the, meet me at the mountaintop, yeah, it'll be a good life until then. Yeah. Um. All right. So the next one I got is I am the party, man. And this one here, he's just like he's talking his usher shit, where he's like, Nah, girl, like you can go out, but I'm telling you right now, you could come to the crib and everything you need is right here. I got the music. I can do it slow. I can do it fat, like. Man, look, so that sure. one, that one's gonna set people. There's probably a couple people who played that yesterday for Valentine's, man. <laughs> if you did, you smart as fuck. No, no. You smart, yeah. you might play it tonight too. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and then the last one, um, big. That shit is a hit. It takes me to like super elite pop status. That song, I can see it being in commercials and movies. In, in shows, it just has everything you need for that upbeat stroll type of vibe. Um, he's got so many hits on this joint, bro. I, I, when you get through it, we got to talk about it again, man, because he, he really takes you on a journey. I'm pretty sure he didn't disappoint. Man, the first half of the album sounds dope. I'm not even mad at it. Yeah. Just due to time constraints, I didn't get to that second half yet. But mm-hmm. it's actually, man. Um, not worried about that body at work pause. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't get me wrong, man. A Town Girl, like you know what I'm saying? I like the way he flipped that old school song. Um, I think it's uh Uptown Girl or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he he's good, man. He, I should bravo, bro. <laughs> bravo. You did uh, it. You did. <laughs> big 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 one clap for you. Yeah, man. So um this past Sunday, you know, it was the Super Bowl, and but I am having a prediction right now. You, we always record these episodes way before the fifteenth. Um, if the Chiefs win, man, I think it'd be dope if Travis Kelsey proposes to Taylor Swift. Don't ask me how this idea jumped in my head. Mm. Um, do you feel like that's too soon? I think he might do it just to up the Grammy thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, hey, she got the Grammy. I got my hardware now, too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You want, you want some of my hardware on you now? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but uh, that would be, hey, it's, it's a moment. You know what I mean? That'd be the moment for a very long time. But um, not mad if he pulled that out. If he had the ring with him the whole game, not yeah. mad at it. Yeah, that's the hat trick. Like you just I think you just said it perfectly, right? She got her hardware. He wins the trophy. And now extra hardware to unite them both. Man, that's yeah, that's that a hell of an accomplishment. Like real man. talk, this will be what his third chip if they uh, if they take care of this business. You're right, yeah, third one. Listen, man, that's a hell of a. You can retire. After this. I mean, he can he can he can do, do it. it. Like, he can really do it. Like, yo, I'm I'm already weeding anything else. I got what I need. I'm married to the game now. You that's know what I'm saying? Like, that's I ain't it. even mad at that. That's... He already got the podcast with his brother. Like, he could go off and do tea. He could do anything yeah, right my brother now. Brother retired. Same yeah, but you know about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't brag about that. That's different. Nah, nah, um, not at all. That's man. what's up. Shit, tell nah, her. Shit, tell her. She already announced a new album. I think coming out in April. So she can't. <laughs> she won't be quitting no time soon. But um, she could do that from the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, so sticking on the the theme of love, you know, you you'll catch that throughout this show as you're listening, man. And once again, thank you all for joining. Yes, Don't yes. forget to subscribe. You know what I mean. You know, hit that button. Uh, follow us on all the socials, and just keeping on the love theme, man. Um, we know that this past January, we recognize the year four since we lost Kobe Bryant, yeah. and for a long time there was a lot of conversations around him being the new logo. But one thing that they did do to memorialize his legacy was the statue. Yeah, they dropped it on 2 8 day. That was super dope. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to know how much Vanessa was involved with the creation of it because it seems extremely detailed. Mm-hmm. And I just know she's not letting anything go under the radar without her fingerprint on it. And um, if she wasn't there, I'm super surprised. But she really she did the thing on that if she had any input on it because it was super detailed. Yeah. Uh, I think it represented, was it the 81-point game, the fans? Yep. You know what I mean? So uh, it was 
like the the knee pad, everything. It was just super dope to see, man. And dropping it on two eight day, sucks. LA couldn't take care of business, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, joke is no joke. But um, shouts to them, man. It, it really came out nice. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. Even down to the calf muscles, like everything yeah, was man. just everything was really detailed. Um, what I loved about before unveiling the statue was. She said, Kobe picked this pose. So if you don't like it, tough shit. <laughs> and then literally the next day, Nike sent her a hoodie that said tough shit. Yeah. Vanessa, listen, you don't know us from nothing. I wear a size medium. Yeah. I'm going to need I'm gonna need an X on my joint. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Appreciate if you want to sign it, that's even better. better. You know what I mean? I'll never um, wash it. I'll just keep it on all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and if anything, if it's not for us, man, my wife wears a small... Matter of fact, a medium, yeah, medium hoodie. You know I know, like saying? my wife was still my, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so uh, yeah, yeah definitely stay on it. Yep, yep. So, clickbait love, man, and I, I, I say this because as you go through social media every day, there's always something that somebody's saying in accordance to relationships and communication that mm -hmm. everybody's like, ooh. And comments <laughs> you know yep, every day. I mean? So first off, I want to start with the man, the legend, the business connoisseur Shaq. Mm -hmm. He went viral for saying that men shouldn't vent to women. How do you feel about that? I agree, and it sucks because you know, you know I'm, you're married. You know, what I mean, everything's supposed to be an open book to each other. You right. know what I'm saying? But it just feels like something you just got to man through it. You know what I mean? It's just like it ain't everything ain't worth the uh, the conversation. You know, not that I'm not looking for support in that item mm -hmm. or a solution on if it's something that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I just might want to fake soak in it, take the extra minute in the shower, just let the water run, go mm. through it. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, I can't. It's it's okay to vent on minor issues if it's major. Keep it to yourself. Just just man. Sometimes you got to man up. You got to right. man up. What was I your thoughts? You. What was your thoughts when you heard it? You know, at first I didn't agree, mm -hmm. but over the last two weeks with the amount, of, the amount of responsibilities that have been building up and the way I've been like feeling about things, I see where he's coming from. Mm. Because if there's certain instances to your point where as, as men, we have to really like judge, is this the thing to say mm -hmm. at this time? Correct. And then are we ready for the response? Because Correct. it is hard to tell someone, I just want to say this and then that's it. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation. It's going to be discord. It has to. That's the whole purpose of the conversation. You know what I mean? But you know, mm -hmm. once you walk down that block, right? There's no more U turn. You got your brake, your brake fluid's <laughs> done. Like you, you're stuck in the road, and now you got to wait for the tow truck. You feel? Yeah. When you have that combo with the missus. So, and and you. So that's another point I was going to make. He didn't say your wife or your girlfriend. He mm -hmm. said women. A period. So that opens it up to just female friends mm -hmm. it, to me at least my interpretation mm -hmm. right so now i 100 percent like when i was thinking about it, i 100 percent agree because you don't know if every woman out there that you're saying this stuff to mm -hmm. is going to protect this information true use it against you true. judge you so after really like sitting and thinking about it i was like you know what Sha shack is on to something mm -hmm. he he's on to something where he's not saying you shouldn't communicate at all but there's there's something about venting. Yeah, that's different. That that can put you in a different space. So I yeah. I, I feel you, Shaq. Right. I, thank you, OG. Fact. It's, a, it's, a very, <laughs> it's a very thin line between communication and venting. Yeah. I, I respect communication. I'm all for. I can mm -hmm. communicate with any woman, but the whole and another thing. You should you should never get in that mode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, because you I think men really don't do it, so it never comes back on them in any way, shape, or form that they exactly. if they don't want to talk about it now, they definitely don't want to talk about it later. Right. You know what I mean? But yeah, shots to Shaq, man. He yeah. always, always got always dropping knowledge. Always doing it, man. Um, so next, um, you're a big fan of T Grizzly, right? I liked him when he first came out. Not that I fell off of him, but I mean 42 Doug came out, a lot mm -hmm. of the guys kind of filled that lane, but I'm I'm rocking with you. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? First day out. I remember that. Uh -huh. Um, so T Grizzly was on the Breakfast Club mm -hmm. and he made an interesting comment saying that trying to explain why he feels like there's no such thing as somebody being the one when it comes to relationships. And just to kind of frame it in case anybody out there didn't see this clip, he's talking about it from the male perspective but it's almost like the reverse where you'll hear a guy say you know the relationship 
didn't last because he realized she wasn't the one. Mm. And he's pr- basically saying that's bullshit. You, meaning the man, mm-hmm. has to be the one. You have to put in the effort. You're the one who proposes. True. So this has to be something you want to stick with and put your effort into. And the effort part hit me and made it so critical because that is true. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you really feel like this person you want to spend the rest of your life with or y'all going to build something, then you do everything in your power to make sure that it works. But I'm interested in hearing your opinion. Hmm. I just want to make sure I got this correctly. Now, when from the male perspective of being the one, he feels that uh, you are the prize as far as us being the male. So work on ourselves to be the one for someone else, you mean? Uh, I don't know about the prize part. But what I interpreted from him saying you being the one means you should be the one to make the relationship what you want it to be. Ah, so uh, yeah. don't put your expectations on somebody else. That's it. Understood. Understood. Mm-hmm. In that sense, um, I could agree with that in that in that light. Where um, if you really want it to be the one, you got you can't get to the Super Bowl without doing putting in the work. Yes. You know what I mean. So um, I agree with that in that sense. But um, a lot of people have the reverse ideology on it, where it's like. She don't make grilled cheeses and cut the corners right, so she can't be the one for me. It's like, dog, <laughs> dog. If everything else was perfect, if that was the backbone. That, that was it. You don't belong. In you don't belong. In you need more time with you and the chef. Like you know, what I'm saying this ain't it. You know what I mean? But uh, as far as the actual meaning of it, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. See, see, I might have to get back on his music now. See, <laughs> like, the fans back. Yeah, we might have to send back. See, I've been trying to repost the clip where we were on Nola, and you said. If you're having trouble with relationships, work on you. Yeah. And that shit hit so many of our viewers. Maybe we need to repost yeah, that, I'm repackage fine. I'm fine that. I'm about, to, I'm about to talk to Noah, get the stems, but. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I want to repurpose yeah, the yeah, package. Yeah, need to that. come listen to the OG, man. Work on you. Work on you, man. You can't. Damn, take my, take my closer. <laughs> we'll be back. We'll be right back. Um. So it, the conversation continues, and Charlemagne uh, actually responds, saying he understands where T Grizzly's coming from, but he also he also Charlemagne also says that she should be special, like she Absolutely. has to be special. And I love T's T Grizzly's response because he says everybody's special in their own way. True. So it's really up to you to find out what part of this person's special to you. Exactly. Understand. And I it was a it was a cool little clip, man. But it's a quick stop and clickbait love. You know what I'm saying? We know there's a lot of clickbait out there. Sometimes it gets spicy on the show, but mm-hmm. we 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 in the love zone today. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So thank you, T, for bringing mm-hmm. that perspective. Uh side question for you based on that uh the little uh conversation with Sean Malane and, and and Mr. Grizz. Yeah. If you needed three special uh specialties from uh your partner, whatever. Mm-hmm. And only two of the three hit. Still the one, right? If you want to make it work, yes. <laughs> <laughs> my man, my man, way to clean up the plate. <laughs> He's like, excuse me, stepping over this ditch. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, all right, all right. Oh man! All right, so we want to welcome everybody to this episode, man. Um. As much as we love love, we adore love, our mothers loved us, our fathers loved us, our family loved us. Um, but as you start to get older, Kenny, man, as you start to find your love interest and you have had the ultimate pleasure of knowing your love interest since you were in junior high yeah, school, yeah, correct? Back. Uh, was it junior high? No, nah, I skipped that summer program. We had this, <laughs> we had this little thing you could have done right before going into high school. I was like, uh, no, they're going to see me in September. Gotcha. So, uh, okay. so it's funny, my, one of my... my my best friend, uh, was there, he went to the summer program. My man, you know, T. Terrence. So um, he said, "Yo, I, I think I got somebody." I was like, "What you talking about?" You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm focused on, I'm focused on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to build me. At fucking fourteen. Fucking know about building. You know what I mean? But um, you know, they were introduced, and uh, you know, it was one of those hate, 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 like hate, hate relationships for uh-huh. a while. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, when you're fourteen, you ain't got, you ain't got no riz. It wasn't, it, wasn't even, it wasn't even Riz back then. It was oh, like, yeah. they ain't had no game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't had no car. I didn't know. I'm 14. You know what I'm saying? You asked for permission to use the phone at this time. That's Landlines, true. too, for those that don't know what that is. Way or back when. Big old rotaries. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, God. But um, it's, it was a hate love thing, but it's a lot of love now. Mm. I'll say that. But I definitely started off hateful. <laughs> yeah, we ain't like each other at all. Not, not, not sworn enemies, like, like an op level, but 
you know, <laughs> it was it was whack for the first for the first week. <laughs> um, because it's funny. I mean, we we dubbed this show "Love Costs Everything," and depending on your perception, you can think we're talking about money, but there's there's a deeper cost. Mm-hmm to being in love because being in love makes you vulnerable to loss. Yes. And that's where the costs come in because if you're really putting yourself out there to T Grizzly's point, if you're really putting in the effort, then it's all just a gamble on, Hey, we're in this together. We're betting on us. Let's push this thing forward. So I love the fact that you said in the beginning, um, it was a bit of love, hate, 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 like hate love, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But can you think about like when you when you first realized that how much like you had for her first? Because I'm pretty sure to, you ain't love how you get to love it. Yeah. Get to like, um, unfortunately, I'm a foodie, mm. so uh, it's uh, well, I'm taking it all the way back before I even asked her to be my girlfriend. Mm. I was like, yo, you know, look left, look right. You know, we in the hallways at a time we shouldn't be. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, you can make pancakes. <laughs> she was like, "Yeah." I was like, but "Good pancakes." She's like, "Absolutely." I was like, you "Got a man?" <laughs> like, you know, so like that was the that was the very next question right after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so ever ever since the whole I like you know can make pancakes, I liked it at a bare minimum. Then yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, "All right, we got a foundation. <laughs> if all we can do is pancakes the rest of our lives, we got a, we had a good base." Yeah, gotcha. you know what I mean. But I think that was the first moment right before me asking if I could be a man, a boyfriend back then. <laughs> How about That's you? That's dope. That's dope. Oh man. When I first realized I liked her, um, it was it was supposed to be me, her, and another friend of ours hanging out, right? Mm-hmm. Because before that, we all went to uh, it's the spot out in City Island where it's like famous for the henny coladas. Mm. So we were out there, and it was like me and like eight girls. Just talking about relationships. Can you play a player? Okay. Oh no, I, I, I wish it was that <laughs> setting. Not, I know the sound. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, fellas. It sounds like it was awesome. No, I was defending us like <laughs> one man <laughs> alone. Um, but it was a deep conversation because you know they were all like really trying to like go in on men, and you know the typical guy that's really just trying to get some ass would be like, yeah, fuck that nigga, baby, I got you. Hmm. I was like, nah, like, you know, sometimes you gotta actually think about his side. True. Ladies don't come for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, there is two sides. At Senor Lee. <laughs> if, 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 if you're looking for him, if you're looking for him to discuss your discourse. Continue. Uh, but hey, yo, we could always have a, a healthy conversation. Super healthy. I'm always all for communication. For that. Def, definitely. Um, <laughs> So then after that, you know, we will, you know, I, I liked her vibe. She was real cool, vibrant. So, um, you know, the, the friend couldn't go no more. So, you know me, man. I'm like, you still want to go? Like, I, I still got the time. And she's like, yeah, all right, cool. And just, just from our vibe and our interaction, body language, everything was just like, yo, what's happening so right, right now right. like, <laughs> like today's not even over what you doing tomorrow? You know, like, like yeah. you know when you go in the bathroom when you're drunk and you start looking in the mirror you like get your shit together bro. <laughs> <laughs> get your shit together. What, what's mm. what's happening to you right now that's how i felt in that moment but i had to keep it to myself because i didn't at the time you know she was seeing somebody i was you know in the mix of figuring my shit mm-hmm. out so it was just like yo just just chill play it calm keep mm. it real player you know mm. what i'm saying like act like you've been here before <laughs> so uh but it was in that moment it was like yo damn like i, I think i really like this girl what's what's up, what's yeah. what's up? Uh, you have to go you have to go get your life together in the bathroom but that's where, that's where, that's where a lot of good answers come from usually in the bathroom you know what i'm saying yeah. i'm not mad at that that makes sense mm-hmm. all right now as far as a step up you like the dope got together life came on but then there was a point in your life where hey y'all going up this like hell Mm-hmm. Like was that a sweep up? Do you remember when when the light turned into love? Woo! Um, I gotta take it back, man. We first started like spending the night at each other's house, and I'm a big, big, big fan of just someone who's very caring and nurturing. And I was sick as a dog, bro. Like mm. I, it was one of those colds where I was like, "This is it." <laughs> like yeah, I didn't, I didn't you know. survive twenty five years of Brooklyn, yeah. and this 
little ass virus is gonna take me out. The man called it different, but go ahead. When I tell you, <laughs> like, it was just like, lay down, I got you, teed, soup, mm. you know what I'm saying? Even the loving, like, everything was just like, I, I felt like for RN on you, for, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it was full euphoria for me, man. And I was just there, I was like, and and mind you, this is probably like maybe a couple months into the relationship, and mm. it was just like that. She always had that like nurturing side, mm -hmm. caring side to her, but she went all in. Like I remember when she got home, medicine, mm. every had everything, and it wasn't like no can. Like she made the vegetables mm. and the broth and mm. all that. And I was just like, oh, nurse, shit. nurse my nurse my boy back to health that, that, that week. <laughs> Oh, that was, but yeah, that was necessary. Yeah, that was it, man. How about you? When like turned into love, you know what's funny? Like uh, the like part came, faded, and then it was like it was so we were just friends mm. with relations. Like we you know it was exclusive, of course, but it was just like I met her and I, and I hate tips, so then we became friends, and then. We felt we liked each other, mm. but being friends was even cooler. So, yeah. you know, maybe we just always kind of had that relationship, but then, you know, life went on, still liking, still liking. But I didn't, and then I just assumed I loved her because enough time had passed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, duh, like, like times five years equal love. So, <laughs> what, what else you going, you know what I mean? What else you going to do at this point? But, like, <laughs> it didn't really hit me because I felt I was in love already. Like, duh, I proposed, duh, I'm here. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The church, man. Because I, like, for years up to this point, you know, before you guys go out, you get the how's this look? Like, no, sure, yeah, yeah, have fun, mm -hmm. great. But the owl walk, you know, the whole wedding dress thing, and the whole just up there waiting, you know, what I mean, gray suit. If you was there, you get it, you read it, you know, what I mean, but yo, when I, when I seen it in the tear, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a and like my eyes just started sweating, I'm like, yo, what is who turned the heat up on my eyelids? Like, you know, what I mean? I'm like, what is going on out here? Like, I'm yeah. like. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, I ain't, I don't even got tissue. I just gotta, yeah. I just gotta eat this. You know what I mean? I was just like, nigga, get that love back in there. Like, you know what I mean? That's when I, that's when I knew, knew. Like, I already felt that was there, but I didn't yeah. know until that moment specifically if there was. Yeah. Let me, let me tell y'all something. I, <laughs> I was right next to him, so I remember the entire day we were just oh, trying shit. to get to the church, trying to make sure everything was all yes. right. So, like you said, we finally there. We waiting. And you know everything is cool, man. We keeping it real chill, real player, real player. Man, the music come on, and she take about like two, three steps in. I remember I'm looking at Tiny, and, and Tiny just makes this face. So then I look at you, and I see your shit leaking, and now I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> my, my eyes start sweating. So we got the blow dries in our face. Like, Who's cutting was, onions? Yo, I was yeah. like, you really put onions in these collars, man. Like it was. It was instant, man. I, I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I, ain't, I, felt I, ain't, I ain't even know. I didn't know I had that in me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I just assumed, like, no, nah, you know, just not that it was a regular day. It wasn't you know, it was a special day, of course. But I just yeah. felt like, you know what I mean? Yeah, just go through it. Like you always do. But mm -hmm. that slowed me down. Thank God I ain't have to do no walking. Yeah. But that slowed me down on my steps for sure. Yeah, because then you start crying, I start crying. I look at Tiny, she starts smiling and crying. I start crying more. Oh I was like, oh, this is ridiculous. Is this a fucking moment? You niggas, you mother. <laughs> I was like, where's the camera, man? Yeah. He said, yeah, give me that, give me that footage. Like, yeah. <laughs> Get them cameras out of here, man. Oh, that's a fact. Oh, man. No, nah, but yeah, it's a beautiful moment, man. I was so happy to be a part of it with you, man. I, and to see y'all love Blossom is just, <laughs> it's everything. Um. And then, you, so you start to sit back and you start to think about since that moment, bro, since you had that moment that you realized this is the love of my life. How has that love grown since? Like, it's weird because after if you bust the thugs here on the aisle, like, bro, now nah, I know, you know what I mean? <laughs> then you just, now you just feel this is the top. Like, you know, all the water in my cup has now spilled over at the church. I have nothing left as far as love goes. Like, and then uh, it's like a, as levels. Like, then you see your girlfriend your fiance your wife then she becomes a mom you're like mm. who's kind of onions like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> who keeps doing this to me like you know what i'm saying so it was weird as uh, as like the kids come and just uh, life instances and situations mm. come and go and shit I, job changes just yeah. you just find ways to pivot and find new ways to love each other and other lights and dynamics and it's just mad dope i'm just like yo i don't it's just growth it's yeah. just like peeling an onion back every so often so uh it's just levels of it. Like, the, I keep thinking I'm out of love. Mm. 
but the the thing is your cup grows with it. I thought it was just yeah. something to fill up. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? But the shit expands, like unfortunately, like like this right here, this right here. <laughs> you keep eating, you know what I mean? It'll keep expanding, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Especially yeah. if you don't work out. You know what I mean? That's where I'm at. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like, but yeah, but yeah. the love thing, it's the organ that just keeps growing, bro. Yeah, for me, man, it was every time we ran into an obstacle as far as you know, our differences on raising a child, mm. our differences on certain methods of communication. Every time we were able to get over that or not even over understand each other in those avenues, mm-hmm. that's where I was like, oh shit, like this, this is uh, like our love is really growing because me, a lot of times if shit wasn't working out the way I wanted it, <laughs> I'm out. out of there, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't have to tell me twice. Sometimes it wasn't even a conversation. I just left the room. Right. So um, making those changes to the way I communicate with her. And changes to the way I did certain things, that that let me know. Oh, yeah, I've, this love is continuously growing, bro. And you know, here we are to this day, man. Still fighting the good still fight, fighting the good fight, man. <laughs> All my life, you know what I mean? Like, what's up, man? Yeah, man. Um, question for you. Um, what's up? You know, it was Valentine's yesterday. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I don't know. If, uh, as time goes on in relationships, and they're not like brand spankingly new anymore. Like it's. It's hard to get the one up as far as the surprise with the love. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, but does your wife like surprises? She loves it. She yeah. lives for it. Okay. Okay. Now, can you remember the last time or uh, what was the best surprise you ever pulled off for her? Ooh, I would like to say it was I proposed. Mm, that's a good one. I don't think she knew that I was on that level mm. ever. You know what I mean? Like, cause you know when you surprise somebody when they when they like stuck looking at you like, is this really happening it's right like, now? Is, like, is Ashton Kutcher gonna pop up? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I know probably people are like, why? Like, what happened? It's none of your business. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, it, it. I like that surprise because it wasn't one of those like jumping for joy, happy surprises. It was one of those like. She had she couldn't react because mm. it was just so off guard, off kilter. I grabbed I Darius, I put him in my lap, I got on one knee. Um, definitely couldn't do that now. He's too big and I'm too old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, at the time it was super it romantic made, in my made, mind. It all made sense. Yeah, and and you know, here we are, bro. But yeah, I would think that was one my best surprise for her. Nice. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um that's fine. My wife is surprised. Like, I don't really think she likes them. You know what I mean? Like, when it happens, she's super appreciate, appreciative of that it happened. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, you got me. This is nice. But all you motherfuckers <laughs> going to be working in Pelican Bay when I'm done. You be, like, what's the loyalty? You've been lying to me all week. Like, you know what I'm saying? As soon as, as, soon as the good part is done, she gets back at the... This is why she's having all the clues of the week back together. Like, you wasn't really doing this. You was over there doing that. And I knew something was up, but I didn't want to blow it. Turn it into a certified FBI agent. You know what I'm saying? Like Agent Carter on you. Just like, see, <laughs> see, you need to mind your business. Just mind your business. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, she's not big on it, but when it does happen, she is she is super appreciative of it. Okay. As far as the um the best surprise, um, you got a better memory than me. Uh, it was the birthday, I want to say early 20s, for those asking. Um, when we did the whole limo thing and went to the club kind yeah. of situation. Like, yeah. That was a good surprise because uh, I think she was, I think we was over at Jessica's house at one point and yeah. then she didn't know what was going on and we kind of walked out and the limo was there and we was like, oh, it's for you. Yeah. And she was like, wait, me, me? Like, yes. <laughs> Nigga, it's your birthday. You know what I'm saying? But I think that's the last good time I got her. Where she, just had, <laughs> she just had no idea. Yeah, that, that was an interesting night. Not one of my best. It was your best night, but not one of my best nights. <laughs> oh, was this the uh... white grass? Yeah, this was the white grass. <laughs> oh, man. For those for those that know the white grass story, you've been you've been here for a long yes. time. It's, it's one of those. Um, if you know, you know, you, know you had to knows. be there or you wasn't there situations. Yeah. But those who were there are going to get please. a kick out of this. Oh, one. That was good one. If you know the white grass story, please put it in the comments. <laughs> We love we love to read that in text a couple of years later. Like, <laughs> appreciate your time. Appreciate your time. Yeah, that might have been the one time that like me and Kenny been rocking forever. That might have been the one time Kenny looked at me and said, "I can't back you up on this one." <laughs> I don't know, bro. I was with you. I was just like, "Yeah," and another thing. Yeah, and another. Wait, what he say? <laughs> 
So, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We got, we, we got it from here. We got it from here. Uh, and it's funny now that I think about it. It could have been snow on it, but there's still some green in there. Uh, <laughs> it's like it's still not white grass, it's still broke. Yeah. But I got you. It was, hey, it was February. You know, it could have been. It could have been. It could have been. You know what I mean? If I, if I really think about that week. My, hey, I'll check the almanac. See if the weather was that day. It might have been precipitation. Oh, oh. man. Um. So now, you know, they always talk about keeping the spice, you know what I mean? Um, sustaining that, that love and intimacy. Do you still surprise her to this day? I do, but they don't feel as grand anymore. Mm. Like, I guess the everyday grind of things, like little things are surprises now. Like, come on, she's like, babe, I'm like, hey, she's like, you cooked? I'm like, yeah. She's like, I didn't know that. Like, I, I, and we're both super happy. Like, you know what I mean? And, like, it doesn't need to be a big thing. It's just like, oh, I didn't know you was making that. So, like, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Wash my hands, get right to it. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, just nothing feels very grandiose anymore. It's just, um, it's more, of, it's just the little things now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's like when I, when I wash the dishes, fuck y'all. I'm about to say, I, 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 I like that you're like, but you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I already know people looking at. He ain't watched no fucking watch dishes. dishes. We've heard you say that countless times. So, man, it was two four. Y'all yeah. don't know my life. Well, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, you're right. It'd be little stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, just like cash app and her some extra bread, or you know, if she's talking about something for like a baking business, you know, I'll probably just randomly get something for her or tell her, you know, if you need to upgrade it. Um, Sidebar, don't you hate when Amazon snitch on you though? Yo. <laughs> try, try to be, be the nice guy like everybody get the alert it's like who ordered a hey man shut, the, shut up in that in that room with the echo you be quiet like you know what i mean but i'm sorry go but ahead. you know in that one instance she doesn't pay attention to a lot so that's how i get away with okay that. sweet 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 yeah sweet. I, I get away with surprising sweet, her all the time because she just be off and la 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 most mm -hmm. of the time um so yeah i mean i i definitely still try but i have to admit it's not the same effort and that's on me to change that and keep that there because she still deserves it. But mm. yeah, man, um, life be life in, and I got to find a way to still surprise her. Uh, keeping it there, like, do you still feel like you got an idea of what your life, what your, your life, of what your wife likes? Like, if she, if there was a surprise that you had to coordinate, you think you still in tune with her current interest? I would say yes. Um, but I think because we're both so busy now, we really aren't really talking about stuff like that mm. um because i would say maybe five six years ago we didn't have that much that going on as far as responsibilities for professionals mm -hmm. so we got a lot to uh, uh, a lot of chances to talk about the things that we were into now we're so focused on our son that yeah. we yeah. really don't talk about what we like that much yeah. so that's why i say i want to say yes but I could potentially be off. I, I'll be honest. What mm. about you? See me, um, with, between work and travel and food prep and then school activity after the fact that me and the wife, feel like we don't really get to spend a lot of time as, as far as just me and her. Yeah. And talk about her, you know, her daily interests are, you know, we get the, you know, how was your days in, but outside of that, we can't really get to, you know, uh, the nucleus or whatever the day was. You know right. what I mean? So I do have a cheat code. Like, you know what I mean? If she's not with, if she's not working or she's not traveling somewhere or helping somebody else out, she's with the kids. The kids are always, you know, mom, my mom, mom. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. they, they get a lot of answers out of her even when she's not thinking she's giving answers to questions. So okay, I can purge them for, hey, what's your mom's favorite color? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's little things like that that I know, but I want to make right. sure I didn't change. That's you know what I'm saying? So the kids are a bit of my cheat code as far as making sure I know what she liked this month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because it changes monthly. Right. <laughs> no, hey, listen, I hear you. I hear you completely, man. Um, yeah, man, I, I think I think that's that's a good way to go about things. And just the, the common conversations that we have about places we'd like to go, things we'd like to do, I think that's that's super helpful as mm -hmm. well. Um, so it's like you said, man, yesterday was Valentine's Day, right? And now that we are here on Side Boo Day, I want to reflect a little bit. What, 
When was the last time? Because we know Valentine's Day is a is a cash grab, but when was the mm-hmm. last time you were excited about Valentine's Day? Excited? <laughs> um, just for the record, I feel this is a woman's uh, uh, commercial um, business made holiday. <laughs> Not that I don't respect it, but um, you know who you are, it's a cash grab. <laughs> but um, as far as excitement, I had to take it back to high school where. I didn't have enough for the gift that I wanted to get. I had to ask mom for a couple extra dollars to get, you know, the, the special little necklace I saw in uh, Kate Jewelers at the mall. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Little shit like that. Where I, and then making sure I get the class before her that day so I could just be on her desk when mm-hmm. she walks in. You know what I mean? I think that was the last, as far as, like, a lot of effort and making sure, like, I was very incognito with my movements and shit, trying to sneak a bag into school with a big-ass red teddy yeah. bear. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. That's when I think I was really excited for it. And it might have just more so because, you know, the show was more present. Yeah. As far as um, you know, everybody oh, the oohs, the eyes, it was different. It's different when you're 15, 16 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh like and you know, I guess young couples kind of live for that extra the audience, mm-hmm. whatever it may be. Because you got haters too, but they wasn't talking, <laughs> they wasn't talking in high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um I think uh, that's when I really thought it was exciting when it was real a real thing for me. I'll say high school. Yeah, man, I've been I've been waiting for this, man. It's, it's 2011. Talk to me. It's 2011. <laughs> um, I'll never forget it. Me and her were we're not even together yet. We were just kind of figuring out this friends friends with benefits situation situation, <laughs> and, and just you know there was a lot of just like back and forth, and there was even a time where we weren't well. I didn't want to talk to her anymore because mm. shit just wasn't making sense to me. And finally, we get we get some footing. In February of that year, like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna see where this goes, and I'm like, it's um, Valentine's Day. I'm gonna take you out. We're gonna go out, and she's like, cool. So I remember literally for it was something. I think for I don't know if it was Jen's birthday or we were just trying to go somewhere. It might have been for a, another person's birthday that um used to be real close to us. We went to Sazon in the city, mm. and. The food was amazing, the decor, and then I remember that they had a like a like a lounge thing in the mm-hmm, basement. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Nah, I gotta come back here. This is nice. a dope spot to take somebody." And then I remember like the very next week setting it up with her, and then we got there, and I'll never forget it. She wore like this this light pink jacket and pants suit that just made her body look amazing. Had like a red shirt on. She did her hair red nice shoes and it was just like oh man and like when she showed up i was like why are we even here we need to go <laughs> like we wasting mad time yeah, you spot. know what i'm saying um but we ate we went downstairs we listened to music we danced and it, it was the most exciting for me because around that time man getting time with her was just a fucking struggle mm. so to to finally have a day and then through the night like us like she spent the night at my crib that night it was that that was the last time I was really excited about Valentine's Day. Mm. Good times, man. Yeah. Damn, 13 years. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Jesus me, Christ. Yeah. yeah. Time flies, man. Time flies. <laughs> as long as you can remember the moments. Yeah. As long as you can remember the moments. That's what's up. That yeah, what's no up. doubt. Absolutely, man. Um, so of course, you know, Valentine's Day goes both ways, man. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and that's really truly important. If your wife could give gift you tickets to any event in the world what would it be tickets that I want to it's like current time on like history uh, no, i know i keep current time. Right. Yeah, current I'm, time. I'm gonna say i want the game six <laughs> when jordan was in his book um tickets. damn i would say like yeah. Like a New York's uh, Super Bowl or championship, one mm. of those. Like whenever we get, I take, yeah, I take, I take Brooklyn Nets too. So yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> Knicks, Nets, Giants, Jets, whoever. If they're having a Super Bowl and it's close to the crib, you know, that'd be it. I think. Okay. That's- all right. How about you? What, uh, what what tickets could you go for? Oh, this this is super detailed, y'all. I, oh, talk I, to I prepared for this one, so <laughs> it would be a ringside UFC pay per view. Mm. John Jones has to be the headliner. Mm. I want um, Alexander Volkanovsky as the co-main event. Okay. And then I need Jim Miller because I'll never forget that day, at, that night at Big Shots when I first met him for the first time, became a big fan. Mm-hmm. And I need Josh Emmett to be on the card because Damn. he's just awesome and he's a knockout artist. And it has to be 
in Vegas. And that's like a five leg parlay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Like yeah. she gives me tickets to that. Nigga, I'm just, man. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, that's a, Shanga, that's up there with the Knicks game there. So all right. <laughs> as far as possibilities, yeah, man, man, yeah. Those is neck and neck. Yeah, yeah right. man. She gift she gift that to me, bro, man. I, I am <laughs> licking her like an icy on a hot summer day when I was like 10 years old. Damn, that's February. You know, you know, <laughs> you know the vibes is real. You know the vibes is real. That's what's up. That's, that's happening for sure, man. For sure. Um, so it's this is gonna be some good trivia for us, man. Uh oh. Top three things your wife would like as a gift right now see like as you get older it's weird as you get older like if it's anything personal mm-hmm. that you actually want just go get it like you know i mean there's no real stoppage in that anymore like mm-hmm. there was a shirt a sweater or perfume come on would you just go oh i ran out so i got more now it's like adult shit it's like oh you seen that stove at lowe's it's like <laughs> yeah yeah six burn i was like hey we you, you going for your birthday she said she said nigga it has a double oven i want that stove i'm like that's not a gift she's like I, you asked me a question i'm giving you an answer i'm like i ain't trying to go stove shopping like you know what i'm saying <laughs> but like it's, it's kind of those things now so she'd be yeah. it's just, if it's not an appliance it's something for the kids i'm like that's not a gift for you babe you know that's true you're not understanding she said you asked me what i want right yeah kids with new shoes go get them new shoes i'm like I'm talking to you. I got yeah. I got two extra dollars this week. I'm talking to you. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, all right. But uh the top three things. Um, a day off, one, mm. um, probably a massage, okay. two, and um kind of, I'm kind of still on the third one, but I say a quality time with me. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey man, sh- sh- I'm, hey, I'm, I'm a gift too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, just for her, but I'm a gift too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. he said, I'm her prize. <laughs> How about nah. you? Uh, if, uh, do you know three gifts that that, uh, that your wife would like right now? Absolutely. Um, and I kind of got to shift one because I, I I forgot she did. She's been asking to get a massage for a long time. Mm. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna extend it because I think these are the three she really wants to. Mm. She wants a she wants an apartment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, a new wedding ring, mm-hmm. and I think she would really love like a major sponsor for her cake business. Mm. You know what I mean? So, in, in the addition of the massage, I think she would probably swap, uh, maybe the apartment for the massage. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. I have, have to ask her that one. That's a. She's like, she's a nigga. Can you give me a massage in a new apartment? <laughs> it doesn't work. That's true. That's true. That's very true. But I think. Those three things right now, those would be her top three gifts. Right, and it's like, and it's, and it's not that it's, uh, it's it's not your usual gift idea when you right. say something. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit out the ordinary when time has been spent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, so years have gone by. It's like, yeah, this is what I really need. Yeah. And you go, oh, I was kind of, I was kind of like something kind of needed. Mm-hmm. But all right, <laughs> gotta love it, gotta love it. But um, these these, as you know, man, it's, it's Valentine's Day. Well, it was anyway. Mm-hmm. We know it's a money grab. We get it. But do you know the top five like industries in this holiday that that do the best? Yes, did a little digging, man. Number one, flowers, and they're dead in ten days. <laughs> flowers, the biggest racket. I remember for one Valentine's Day, is it was this dope idea. They actually took a bunch of flowers and made a cake out of it. Ooh. And this was before she was interested in baking and anything like that. So it was dope when they delivered it to a job. She opens it and everybody's like, oh my God, he got you a cake. And then he's like, wait a minute, that ain't no cake. <laughs> po- 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 <laughs> po- po- <laughs> it, was, it was the dopest shit I ever saw. Um, and, and so, yeah, but I'm not surprised by flowers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, flowers. That's, that's, just, that's just a racket. You know, I, my wife didn't even like flowers like that. Like, <laughs> you lucky. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry to hear that. You lucky. <laughs> um, number two, candy. Yeah, they might be battling Halloween with, as far as, 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 as chocolates go. Yeah, they might be battling Halloween. Very true. Third, clothing and lingerie. I'd much rather the latter there, but all right, all right, I see the vision. I see the vision. I think we all do. We all, we all do. <laughs> Number four, I'm, I was a little shocked by this one greeting cards. 
Oh, like a little Valentine. Yeah, you know, I think that's a big business amongst the, the youth of those that are in love. As far as, you know, the, the 12 to like 19 year olds, you know, the, the, the gift card. Hey, Sons giving it to mothers. Yeah, okay. you know what I mean? It's a, it's a lot of industries you can fill that void with. All right, all right. At number five, which I actually thought would beat number four, jewelry. Hmm. I thought as far as uh, like profit goes, I thought jewelry would be at the close to the top, but I guess less of it is bought. But it, although it is expensive, it kind of balances out. Exactly. <laughs> right. When you think about the cost. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. mm-hmm. but like, that's crazy. That's out of flowers and jewelry. Like everything else you get from Amazon. Damn you know what I'm saying? Like um, RCVS. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But um, shit. It's, it's a racket, bro. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's, I don't, I don't fuck with it. <laughs> like I do it because, you know, I got somebody I love, like I got kids and shit. Mm-hmm. But I can really do it out of it. <laughs> I can really do it out of it. I ain't gonna lie. To you. All right, so we're going to have some fun at this part, y'all. Uh, once again, thank y'all for joining us, man. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, so we're going to have some fun. What we both did was we both spoke to each other's wives. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have a quick 10 things I love or hate about mm. your attempts at romance. And this mm. is from our wives mm-hmm, perspective. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to start off oh, shit. with five things that his wife loves mm-hmm. about his attempts. Okay. He'll do the same, and then after that, we get to the, we get to the hate. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we start everything we love here. Always, in FCP, always, right? always. All right, my brother. So, according to Mrs. Nelson, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. number one, sex intimacy is on point. See, you know what I'm saying? I'm out, shake we, your hand. we outside. <laughs> we outside. You know what I'm saying? Not just February. You know what I'm saying? But we outside. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. That's what's up. Thanks, babe. Yes. <laughs> Um, number two, how you like to cook for her, make sure she eats well, mm. but she did throw in the slight when you do. Hating. But hey, man, I, <laughs> like I said, hey, it's a little surprises. You know what I'm saying? I'm not cooking every day, mm-hmm. but you might get one once a week. Got of me. You know what I mean? It's like a good surprise smell. Okay. And, it's, and it's dope. Y'all still got the love, hate, hate, love thing man, going on. Every, it's every, consistent. Uh, uh, super. Super. <laughs> Flip of the coin. <laughs> all right. All right. Um. You always making sure she's okay, especially when life throws a curveball. She knows she can always depend on you to be by her side. Got to be supportive. My man. Got to be supportive. All right. Four, you are protective over her. I know exactly why she says that because whenever she, like, the supermarket isn't far. <laughs> so she's like, oh, I'm going to walk. I'm not take the car. She's like, it's right around the car. I'm like, are you trying to get thrown in a white van? Like every time, <laughs> like every time, like she's on foot somewhere. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, it's right up the block. Don't you know people got white vans? Like that's my big, I don't know why. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm a little protective in that aspect. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, and then the times that you compliment her. She loves that. Okay. All right. I gotta, gotta do it more. I know that. Mm-hmm. But um, all right, all right. Thanks, babe. I appreciate the likes, man. <laughs> now, as as you know, man, Mrs. Lee, man, she don't play around. She 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 gets to the bull. She gets to the shit. So <laughs> I'm gonna start with you, my man. It's number one. <clears throat> she likes friendship without expectations. Noticeable anyway, though. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, she, listen, my wife has assets, and I'm an ass man. <laughs> so. It was noticeable, but like I told you, I thought I was keeping a player. But then after the conversation in the bathroom, I realized I wasn't. And this confirms it. <laughs> and it was number one. It left the list. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was a four, five, or coming in at three. Like, no, it was top of the list. Respect out the gate, it. man. Out, out the, the gate. gate. Uh, number two, uh, you give advice without bashing. Mm. That's what's up. That's what's up. I'm working on that on myself. <laughs> yeah, communication is always big to me. We always had like really long, thorough conversations when we were just friends starting out. And that that remains consistent. Uh, coming in third, how you always listened. Mm, okay, mm-hmm. all right, I respect that. Hey, it's part of communication, man. Can't do one without the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my wife's a storyteller, y'all. So, 
I, I, I am when I tell you I am trained, I am molded in the art of listening. Yeah, he said, he said, he said molded. He said, "Can I get can I get a coffee?" Uh, 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 coming in number four, uh, your humor. Mm. Yeah, it's funny because it, growing up, I wasn't that funny. <laughs> but yeah, I always like, observed. No, I always observed funny people like you. You were one of my first muses because it was just like Kenny could make getting coffee funny y'all like it's it's just in his nature if you listen to our episodes he comes up with shit sometimes that i can't speak no more because i'm laughing it's like that wasn't on the docket you know what oh, i mean man. so um but yeah i've always observed how to be funny and, and when to have the humor and then when i finally saw my moment man i just so, so it hit, so it didn't, and then you know, as you get older, man, you get better. Yeah, now you got the best of. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's it. What's up. <laughs> and, uh, and rounding out number five for items liked about your attempts at romance, <clears throat> your kind heart to always try to help with work or anything when you could. Oh yeah, man. You go, brother. Yeah, man. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. <laughs> Getting straight to the hate. Now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about that time. You, let, I'll let you start. Yeah, with I'm, the I'm, hate I'm gonna start with the hate on you, man. Um, <laughs> as you know, I, I went, went to the, went to the, the good, the good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But now, unfortunately, there's a, there's a tail. So every coin has a head to it. So, <laughs> <clears throat> should I should I start at five? Work my way back. Yeah, for, for the hate. That's interesting. All right, let's, let's, start a, let's, let's go backwards. Let's see. Let's see what the least hated thing is at, yeah. at, at this point. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Number five. She hates the lights in your room, brother. It's too bright. <laughs> <laughs> that kills the romance, my man. She hates that shit. So, all right. So, let me tell you. It's a little right? backstory. <laughs> I had no control over the room, the, the paint in my room when I was around, like, mid-20s or whatever, right? Mm. It was like a light mint color. It didn't matter to me. I loved the room because I had, um, I had were curtains that were really light. So the light would come. I liked light at that time. Mm. I didn't like having to turn the light on. Mm. So I liked the sunlight, the daylight coming in. So my room was bright as shit in the morning. She hates that. She's a vampire. She wants mm -hmm. to wake up and just be like, darkness. Yeah. You know what I mean? So room yeah, facing that's the what east. Yeah, the room facing the east and the AM. I could, I could she, she's got that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. tattoo, tattoo. Uh, <laughs> coming in number four. Mm -hmm. How clingy your mom was. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> It's a you baby know. boy, man. It's a baby boy. <laughs> what you to do, man? Baby boy. Yo, surviving Maria Moore. <laughs> that, that's a documentary in itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, number three, uh, being a performer uh, calls out a lot of attention. So it's not what y'all think. <laughs> <laughs> no judgment. No judgment. <laughs> um, so, yes, you know, back in my heyday, uh, the infamous Tydro was my alias, and I used to rap. And I met her around the time that I stopped doing that. So she didn't know if I was going to like, stop doing it. She's like, you still working on that mixtape? <laughs> <laughs> so she was always in the back of her mind thinking, you know, um, if he continues, how will this impact our relationships? Mm. I, I get what she's talking about. She thought Rock Nation would call every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming in at number two. Mm -hmm. uh, sending her the same pictures as other people? Now, we're not talking about reels, which is, you know, the real relationship episode. If no. you haven't heard that yet. Yeah. But um, s s could you explain that one? Same you know, it's funny. All this shit is from the beginning. You're talking about romance now. Like, this is... I moved on. I'm not that man. You can tell she's holding on to something. Yeah. But I, I appreciate you, babe, for being honest. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. All right. All right, guys. This wasn't my best moment. As you can see, I don't have a lot of best moments, right? First it was white grass. Yeah. Then it was this. Um, And not in this particular order. So, <laughs> remember when we did the cruise? Yeah. We, all right. So once one one of those nights before we went out, you know, I'm in my you know sexy daddy mode, I got my shirt off, uh -oh. and I take a picture. So, you know, I, hey, I'm growing. I could be honest, right? At the time, I was seeing someone, but me and her were cool. <laughs> so mm. I take I take the picture, and at the time, I think I had like a like a BlackBerry, and BlackBerry makes you save it. So I saved the shit under <laughs> under the person I was dating's name and put like, you know, like son daddy or something's boo, right? Mm. And I sent it to her. Then I tried to be a player and sent it to Shay too. Mm. 
not remembering that I saved it. Oh, man, you snitched on yourself. I snitched on myself. The details, the details. I snitched on myself. So when I said it to her, I'm thinking, yeah, she gonna like that shit. So she she responded back. She's like, such and such boo, huh? I was like, oh, shit. (laughs) That backfired quickly. (laughs) <laughs> I know he's like, ooh, delivered. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> got him. You know what I'm well, saying? this is before the delivered, man. Oh, okay, this, this is when you just hope that just they hope got that it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like a sitting a pigeon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so she sent the LOL, but I knew that shit was sketchy. That was oh, the sketchiest LOL was, in history. <laughs> all lower cases. Like, oh. Yeah. I, as you can see, I still hear about that shit to this yeah. day. So was, at least it wasn't nudes. It could have been worse. Yeah. Could have been nudes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, and coming in at number one of things most disliked by Mrs. I Lee. got a feeling I know what this one is. You ready, though? Yeah. <clears throat> How many girlfriends you had? Like, felt, she said, <clears throat> we need to have some space here. How many girlfriends you space. had? Space. Hey, man. You got girls that are friends. Mm. I don't want y'all out there like, wait a minute. Like, mm. what the? She doesn't like how many friends that I have that are females. Um, no mm. excuse, but I have to give context here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't mind me, y'all. Just checking my nails. <laughs> I have to give context here. I work in the healthcare industry. Anybody who works in this industry knows it is dominated by women, although they do not get the right pay equity that they deserve. See how I do you that. Brought in this into pay equity? You brought this into pay equity? I need sympathy, bro. Oh, <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm going to get it right now. <laughs> and before you dig yourself deeper, I'm, she da- just, I'm but, down 12 with nine seconds. Before, I'm I, trying to Reggie Miller this joint. <laughs> all right, let me do a quick halftime. Let me do a quick halftime speech for you. It's like, all right, she didn't, she didn't complain about your current work campaigns that are female. She just said how many girlfriends you had, like a past tense thing. I don't know if that helps anything right now. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Damn, my bad, dog. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Um, because naturally as you you know progress in your career if i'm still in the same industry and i'm progressing in my career it na- it naturally makes me meet more people mm-hmm, and make more connections the and game. the healthcare field hasn't changed over the last 12 years or actually 14 years we've been together mm-hmm. so naturally that's more women so mm-hmm, i totally get it mm-hmm. um i do everything with class and um so far you know what i mean i i think Everything has been with respect, but I totally get where she's coming from. The fact that anybody can even have a conversation with me in, in a way, you know, it, it, she's like, fuck that shit. <laughs> like, hey, out the gate. Out the gate. So yeah. Who that? Who that? What's she here? I get it. <laughs> but yeah, those are your top five. But you did have a bonus one. Um, a bonus hate? A bonus hate. What the hell? <laughs> I think they might be like the six man off the bench kind of thing. <laughs> I'm already six man. Uh, dislikes your sarcasm. Bro, <laughs> hey man, it was it was it was, it was a bonus. <laughs> like, yeah. some, somebody shot a tech, you know what I mean? Somebody had to go get this last shot off. You know what I'm saying? But um, but yeah, man. Um, yeah. Oh, top five man. don't top five don't like. What? what? Um, all right. So same like you. Uh, what Mrs. What Mrs. Nelson say, man? <laughs> um, so this is this is odd. For number five, it's like she wanted to think of another one, but she can't. But she wanted to let you know that. There's another one out there. See, now I'm gonna be on my toes the rest of my life because I don't know what you hate now, babe. Thanks, babe. Like I, I did that on purpose. I gotta commend you. I gotta commend you, Miss Nelson. That was dope. <laughs> that was dope because she just kind of put left, it like she left that open. You think you cool, but you're not. <laughs> yeah. She could change out number five for the rest of her life. Like, That's you know, it. Now I know what number five is today. Like yeah. wow, you said, have one last week. Yeah, she right. made it interchangeable. That, that was creative. All right, all right. All right. All right. Number four, being judged by you. Yeah, I'm judgy. Um, you know why? Because I have a way of doing things, and when that thing isn't done that way, I kind of just look at you. I may not comment on it, but being with someone for so long, they can read your eyes. So <laughs> even if you just like, I'm gonna just shut up. Yeah. But she's looking at my face. She's just like, yep. Wait, or she's like, why are you so loud? I'm like, what? Like, you know what I'm it's like nothing was said, but everything was said. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a judgy guy. <laughs> um, number three, you. Don't surprise her with much. Damn, I gotta, I gotta ramp up the cooking. Um, <laughs> I thought that was, I thought that was, that is my big move. So, uh, twice a week <laughs> <laughs> on the old stove. This time I have to up the schedule. Oh man, <laughs> you're just waiting for Taco Tuesdays. You know what I mean? Now I gotta do something on Fridays. <laughs> All right, number two, lack of understanding at times. See, this is 
this is right up there with number four because I have a certain way of thinking of ways of things getting done. Like there's a box, and I I stand in the box. I see this. I see the conclusion here. But I also like to step outside the box and see if there was any other way this could have happened. Mm-hmm. And you know, she likes to stay with me inside the box. I'm like, hey, that's cool. You can stay here. Let me go. I'll be right back. Mm. Let me just go see if there's another route to get back inside the box. And you just left her alone. Just left her on the box. And now she's just like, you're not even going to take me on this journey with you. I'm like, nah, I I need to go on on this one solo. Did you at least leave her with a taco? You just left her. No, it wasn't even Tuesday. It was just like, (laughs) it was just like, you know, I'll be back. Let me just see if there's another way to do this. And if, and sometimes I don't even come back. Like it's just like. You know, went off with a new idea, and I don't know what he's doing, kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I understand her point. If I found a new one that was better and didn't convey that, I'm working on myself. <laughs> so I understand the issue. I just have to work on it. Yeah. All right, brother, you ready for number one? All right, I'm nervous, but talk to me. Lack of affection at times. That's a direct counter to the last number one. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't be no, no PDA. No. I, I'm not big on PDA. You hmm. know what I mean? I got kids and shit. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, you know, there's a, I'm a love in the sheets. <laughs> I, I fight it in the streets. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That was so, proven by number one. You know what I mean? So I'm a, <laughs> I, I just save my romance for the time and place. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The PDA. I'm not big on PDA. You know what I'm saying? Because I, you know why? Because I'm the guy that goes. Get a room. Whenever I see, it, you know what I mean. <laughs> if I see somebody in the in the in subway, yeah. I just that's a funny thing, you know what I mean. But I don't ever want to be me kissing somebody. Get a room, like, you. You don't know me, you know what I mean. So all right, I'll try. I will add that to the list of things I need to work on. Yeah, man. Thanks, Mrs. Nelson, for that for that uh, update. Yeah, man. Um, infamous quote from Sons of Anarchy. Man, I forgot the mom's name, but men want to be loved. Women need to be wanted. Mm. And I had to learn that because it it'll be little things, man. It'll be little things if I if I don't kiss her before I leave for work in the morning, if mm. I don't notice little slight changes that she's made, if I don't ask her out on a date, um, just those little like hug random hugs throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Need those. those things, bro, put so much deposits into your relationship, man. I do. I do. That I get you, bro. The day to day, the hustle and bustle, you you get programmed in that mm-hmm. routine, and you're thinking, okay, these are the things that you want me to do, so I'm doing them. Yep. But you want me to stop and remember all this other stuff too, man. It's just, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. One one man, ten fingers. <laughs> you know, it's rough. It's rough, man. It's like, it's like one smartphone. <laughs> what, is, what, what you want me to do? He's like, I already got like eighty reminders yeah. for tomorrow alone. Half of them, half already got swiped. Like, yeah. like extend the week. That's um, funny. no, listen, I I completely understand, fellas. We are right in this with you. Um, uh, you know, we're just using this episode to share our experience because it, it, somebody's got to tell the story. Somebody's got to give you know some sort of like light out into venting, but also remembering that. If you want to put the effort in to making it something big, got to do the work. You got to do the work, man. Got to do the work and listen to your woman. Got to listen to what you see us here bearing the things that they don't like because it's things that we have to face and we have to correct if we want to make them as happy as possible. And that we do. So we're going to work on it. Yeah, man. Next Valentine's. (laughs) (laughs) Jokes, jokes, jokes. (laughs) Jokes, jokes, jokes. Oh man. All right. So at, at this section, bro, I'm gonna pass this to you because um I'll never forget when you first used this line and it stuck with me. We were talking about something with relationships, and you just came out and said you gotta prove your love every night, man. Yeah. Please tell me. Um, you, you coined this phrase years ago. Does this still hold true for you to today? Every chance I get, man. Um, I forgot where it was. <laughs> it was probably two weeks ago. So I was with Jen. And you know, a guy came up to her. And I'm like, you know, what I mean, I just kinda I just get the eye like like a like a stranger eye, like I don't know you. And it was just, you know, somebody needed directions. She's like, Oh, just go that way. You know, I watched him walk off and I walked up right by her. I'm like, I gotta prove my love every night. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, What are you talking about? I'm like, who's that? She's like, I don't know. Like, why are you talking to him? He asked the question like he yeah, answered everybody's question. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, was, I was just messing with her, but uh, she's like, man, man, you are crazy. Let's go. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it happens. It's just it's, it's just a quote that rolls anytime there's a situation <laughs> where you feel like you got to step up and be the man. It's like, I got to prove my love every night. But mm-hmm. I can't take all credit for this phrase. Uh, I do use it often, but 
got this from Eddie Kane from the famous Five Heartbeats movie. Uh, uh, it was okay. super dope. Uh, he's he's he's, uh, he's still a girl's lady. <laughs> he was walking off. Robert Townsend tried to stop him. He was like, yeah, it's for me. He said, no, nah, this is for me. He kept it moving. <laughs> Dude came back with the drinks with his girl. Girl was gone. He's like, I gotta prove my love every night. You know, you know what I mean? I think Eddie King got beat up that night. But um, <laughs> yeah, man, uh, how, how funny movie. If you haven't seen it, it's super old, but yeah, good times. Now I've always loved the line because it sounds better than this is bullshit. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it, like you said, it, it rolls a lot smoother. It doesn't get them mm-hmm. upset. It kind of leaves them in confusion. Um, the only other thing I think that was is really cool to use that I got. I think we both got from Mr. Pinero is it was one time him and Mrs. Pinero were going back and forth about something calm. Mm-hmm. And then he looked at her and he said, so you going to turn down this? <laughs> <laughs> the in-laws, man. I did, I, he does that like a, like, a, like twice a year. And every time he does it, bro, I, I die laughing. It's just hilarious, bro. That's a, Every time. That's a good one. And it was funny because Nothing really catches Mrs. Panero off guard. So the mm-hmm. fact that she was just kind of stuck looking at him smiling, he I was just, like, oh, nah, this, like, is, yeah. this is the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, those, those are up there in his best stuff. So like, yeah, he's, he's absolutely. Got one. He's absolutely. Got one. All right, man. So uh, um, before we wrap up, brother, any last closing thoughts around giving people advice for those out there who are either looking for love or looking to keep things spicy in their relationship at this moment, day after Valentine's Day. Hmm. Take it away, bro. If you are a fan of the FCP, the Freedom Cage podcast, and you have locked into a, one, one or more of our episodes, you understand uh, Mr. Senor Lee's point of, you know, woman shouldn't be coming home past 2 a.m. Mm. Um, I get it. I stand on that with him, 10 toes down. Uh, but if you want to keep things spicy in your relationship, come home after 2. <laughs> that'd, that'd definitely, that'd definitely turn. Uh, hey, the locks might be changed, but I say keep spice in the relationship. Like, it's a little toxic, but you know, a drop of toxicity and pure water ain't still pure. You know what I mean? Ninety nine point nine is still passing the test, but you need that every so often to keep some spice. Mm-hmm. So, but don't get don't get crazy. I'm talking two hundred four or something. <laughs> I don't want nobody, you know, coming coming here with a suitcase talking about it ain't work out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, not, it's not our job. <laughs> but um, as far as if you are trying to find love. Not to harp on our old uh, segment with Miss Nola Rowe, but keep working on yourself, man. Mm. Um, you have to improve yourself in order for someone else to gravitate to you and your light. Mm. Because you can't chase other people's light because they ain't yours. That's true. <laughs> no, that's true, man. Great points. How about you, my good man? Um, so I'm gonna go. You know, I'm I'm very big on public speaking, and you know, just having like abbreviations and, and quotes are always really good for people to stick with and and take away. So I'm gonna go with slack right? S-L-A-C-C in this case. Number one is sacrifice. Whether you're looking for love or you're in a relationship, it's all about what you're willing to give up to make the other person happy Mm. and vice versa. If sacrifice doesn't exist on both sides of the relationship, it's going to be very hard. It's going to take a lot out of both of you. So think about what you're willing to sacrifice to keep things afloat. Mm -hmm. Um, Laughter. Laughter does wonders for actually opening yourself up to people, opening Mm -hmm. them up to you, and then keeping a relationship going. Imagine every day you all are just sitting there, just very monotone, serious conversations. No laughter? Like, yeah, that's draining. You don't want that. You don't want a long, sad movie. Absolutely. Um, Affection. Affection, fellas, and some of y'all ladies out there. Affection goes a long way for those moments where you can't be fully intimate in the set in the sense of sex, Mm -hmm. because it allows that person to know you still want them. You still have that um, connection. There's something about skin to skin that um, really just, you know, increases the endorphins Mm -hmm. and it does something for your, your body chemistry. If you no longer can be affectionate with someone that tells a lot. True. And I, I, I'm not going to say it's going to be the end of the relationship or you'll never find love, but it's going to make it very difficult. To keep maintaining it. For, yes. for sure. For sure. Yeah. Communication. Can't stress it enough. Be clear. Have healthy communication. Set boundaries in how you communicate with each other. You can't be calling each other names. Don't go below the belt, even though, that, even though that's the best way to win an argument. And <laughs> I love winning. We keep score over here at FCP. <laughs> um, that's how you keep it spicy as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but understand 
you know your person's triggers, you know their limits. And if you're just getting to know somebody and you're trying to get find love, you want to find out hopefully up front what those limits are. Mm. Because it allows you to be able to make the choice if this is someone that you want to pursue even further, knowing some of their boundaries. And also on the flip side of that, be honest and open and transparent in the beginning. I'm not saying you need to tell them your credit score, mm. but it's important you, though. <laughs> it is. It very, it very much mm -hmm. is. But you really need to be real about where you're at, and it goes in line with what Kenny said, right? Working on you, you probably want to incorporate that in the in the early communication, and also be creative. You know what I'm saying? Like, bring some shit into the bedroom that will, you know, have her like, where did this come where did you, from? Where did you learn that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, um, when you do certain things that keep her shocked. Um, keep her on spice, remind her or remind your partner that you're still very much interested in them and their pleasure and their interests. I tell you, man, it goes a long, long way. Okay. All right. Slack. Two C's. Slack. Yep. For all the gangbangers out there. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. That's right. That's right. Oh. Well, uh, I do got one more thing before we definitely get out of here tonight. Uh, yes. Big shout out to the missus. Uh, tomorrow, technically, she will be celebrating her 21st anniversary of her 19th birthday. So, um, shouts to you, baby. Love you much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, another another good day, another year down, another lap around the sun. Absolutely, man. We, you know what I'm saying? Um, sending plenty, plenty of love. Um, watching y'all for over the years has been amazing. Watching her grow into the amazing mom, woman, professional that she is. I mean, it's it's amazing to see, and, and and it makes sense because she's cut from a cloth. I uh, love the Paneras, as you said. Um, they're amazing as well. And, you know, just a special shout out to my, my wife. Um, it is the day after Valentine's Day. We don't take too much into Valentine's Day because we try and treat every day, you know, like it's Valentine's Day. Um, and, and not to boast, it's just really the fact of, I think, appreciating the time and knowing that it's not promised. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to wait for some soul day by the industries to to really treat your person special. Mm -hmm. I think if you incorporate that to the point that you made in little ways every single day, these days are really just like fluff for other people. Yep. But, it, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, shout out to my wife for everything that she does, the amazing um, entrepreneur that she is, mom. And... You know, it's, it was great to have this episode with you, bro. It's just kind of reflect back on, on well, everything that's going on. Well, remember, love costs everything, man. It's that's not just it. it's more than money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Way more than money. Way more than money, man. So make sure y'all save up <laughs> and <Yes>. prepare. <laughs> yeah. A lot of piggy banks, different things. Mm -hmm. A lot of emotional planning, emotional yeah. intelligence, yeah. all that stuff, hmm. man. Um, so before we get out of here, man, any last thoughts other than that? Um, hey man, happy Valentine's Day, happy side boot day to those celebrating today. Um, but that's all I got, man. All right, all right. So, listen, man, once again, we thank you all for joining us here today, man. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, like, share, comment. We love all of that. Make sure you go check out the merch shop, a lot of really cool stuff on there. Maybe get your girl or your side boo something really nice for themselves. All sizes. Um, also, follow us on all socials, man. We're on everything you can think of uh we live stream every wednesday every third wednesday of the month we have the fcp dad series which mm -hmm. people are loving so far you can catch up on the last i believe three series that we have so far before we get started on mama's baby papa's maybe <laughs> mm -hmm, <laughs> um but listen it's that time of the show unfortunately man we gotta go so you are now released back into your regularly scheduled programming corporate life, parental life, entrepreneurship, whatever it is that you do, we salute you. I'm Senor Lee. Okay, Captain. See you back next pay week when we lock back in to Free State of Mind.